What's up everybody, it's Sage, what's up? Today we're going to talk about Scatter. This is going to be episode 4, part 4 of my ongoing continual weekly series in which I cover all the talents in the game. So let's talk about Scatter. Alright, so here's a description. Scatter at 1 of 8, you're going to reduce the target's energy by 5 when attacking. At 5 of 8, you're reducing the target's energy by 25 when attacking. And it goes all the way up to 8 of 8, where you're reducing the target's energy by 80 when you're attacking. So before we can really talk about scatter, we got to talk about what energy is. Energy is going to be that purple bar that's underneath your hero's health bar. And when that purple bar fills up, you have 100% energy. On your next attack, that's when you proc. The energy bar moves up in increments of 15. So 15... 30, 45, 60, so on and so forth until you get 100% and then you're going to prop. So you can either gain energy by attacking or you can gain energy from being attacked. If you are being attacked, you're going to also gain 15 energy with each attack. It's kind of hard to calculate exactly how the energy bar fills up because as you receive damage from troops, from buildings, it's going to actually feed your energy bar and cause you to proc quicker. But in theory, you should proc on every eighth hit. After seven normal attacks, you should proc on the eighth attack. So we'll drop him on this dungeon right here and we'll see how it works real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he procced a little bit early, but he's being fed energy by uh, because he's receiving damage. You can see his energy bar going up. It goes up a little bit faster when you're receiving a lot of damage. You see it jumped when he got hit by that uh, paladin. So now that we understand the basic concept of energy, we can go back to scatter. We know now that every time that you attack someone, you're actually going to be feeding them energy. Because you gain energy by either attacking or by being attacked. So when you're attacking your enemy, you're actually feeding them energy. And we know that you feed energy in increments of 15. So now when you look at these uh, skills, skill levels of scatter, maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. So at 1 of 8, instead of feeding them 15 energy when you attack them, you're only feeding them 10 because you're taking away 5. At 2 of 8, you're taking away 10. So you're only feeding them 5% energy. At 3 of 8, you're not feeding them any energy because every time you attack them, it's just like a straight dud. You're just hitting them but you're not giving them energy. Now they're still they're still gaining energy from attacking you, but you're not giving them energy. Now at 4 of 8 scatter, that's when the magic starts to happen because not only are you not feeding them 15 energy when you attack them, but you're also taking away some of the energy uh, from them when they're attacking you. So you're taking away 5% energy from them. At 5 of 8, 25. You're taking away 10 of their energy when they attack you and you're not feeding them energy. 6 of 8, this is the big jump right here from 25 to 40. Remember you're going up in increments of 15. Now you're actually starting to prevent them from getting to their proc because you're taking away 40 energy every time you attack. You're not, gaining, you're not giving them energy and they're not uh, gaining energy when they attack you. When you get up to 7 of 8 and 88, 8 of 8, now it's kind of overkill. And this is when you're preventing them from getting any, any energy at all. They cannot proc. They cannot do anything uh, except no, attack you normally. But they're not getting fed any energy. So from 7 of 8 to 8 of 8, that's when you can completely disable someone from proccing. A high level scatter, I would say 6 of 8, 7 of 8, or 8 of 8, can prevent just about any hero, demon, or centaur from proccing. So it's one of those must-have talents for certain game modes. But just like every other uh, talent that I've been covering in my ongoing weekly series, I have to talk about the bad part of Scatter. I have to talk about what makes it not that desirable 
and then I'll go into why you want it on your heroes. So not too long ago, Scatter was one of the worst talents in the game. It was up there with Scorch and Self Destruct and Blade Shell. I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to re-roll a 5 of 8 scatter, a 5 of 5 scatter back in the day. Scatter only works on your normal attacks. You can't stack scatter on top of your proc. Now because you can't stack it on top of your proc, it limits its range. So it's not a global talent. It's a DPS talent. And it's only going to work on normal attacks in a DPS setting with a team or an enemy directly in front of you. Back in the day, the only game mode where you would have a team in front of you was Arena. But there's only a 1 in 3 chance that that would happen. Because they can take another lane and now your scatter is ineffective. Because you're not hitting someone in front of you. But even then, scatter was only effective if you had it on every single hero on your team. If you only had scatter on one hero and you were going against a in a DPS setting in the arena with a team of war god and heavy blow or whatever have you then they would still trounce all over you you had to have it on every single member of your team in order for it to be effective and in order to prevent the other team from rocking but everything changed when IGG introduced the new class of demons and centaur bosses that could not be stunned by heavy blow when that happened scatter became important again because the only way to stop those guys was to scatter them to death perma silence them and you had to have a scatter team in order to do that another big move for scatter was the lost realm now you have situations where you're going head to head guaranteed head to head against other teams and it's not just an arena setting where they can pick any lane now you're going head to head also Lost Battlefield and all the other game modes now that are introduced where you're going head to head against other teams. Now Scatter has become important again. So let's see what a Scatter team can do for you. I'm going to go against this guy right here. He has, look everybody's double evolved. Everybody. I got one double evolved. And he just mops the floor with me. No problem. So let me switch it up. I'm going to put a scatter team up here. Um, Alright, so this Harpy, Rain, Harpy Queen has 6 of 8 scatter. This Multanica has 7, or has 4 scatter. I think that's it. But I got 2 guys with scatter now. And. We'll see what happens when I add in a hero with 6 of 8 scatter. Alright. A little bit different. I, you know, I can't do play-by-play -play commentary, but this is the same team. All I did was add in my Harpy Queen, who has 6 of 8 scatter. And you can see right there, it went from them completely decimating me to me completely decimating them. So they have all of those uh, double evolved heroes, but why is my thing tripping? I don't know why it's tripping. Anyway, I got the victory. So all I did was I took out uh, one of the heroes and I put in my 6 of 8 scatter harpy queen in there and it made a big difference. So aside from those game modes, when they also added the new HBMs where you had a Centaur boss that couldn't be stunned, and you also had uh, Wretched Gorge where you have these demons and these Centaur bosses coming out in waves, Scatter became one of those top uh, tier talents because it was the only way to prevent them from procking and decimating your whole team. So Scatter grew in importance, and today it's one of those top talents that you must have. You must have a, a, a scatter team in order to beat HBMT, in order to get your battle altars back, in order to beat the Lost Realm Demons, in order to do almost everything. Uh, scatter is one of those 
those talents that are must needed are needed the most in this game now. So let's talk about heroes. So first of all, just like every video, I have to first tell you who not to put scatter on. Do not put scatter on Pixie in any way, shape, or form, not as a crest or as a main talent, because Pixie comes with level five scatter. So it would be redundant, it would be stupid, it would be a waste. Aside from Pixie, aside from Pixie, scatter is a useful talent on every hero. Before you discard that hero or sell them for shards or whatever you're going to do, open them up, see if they have scatter. And if they have scatter, you want to use that hero. I opened up my ninja one time and had 5 of 8 scatter. Now that ninja is on my Lost Realm team because that ninja will scatter you to death. So scatter is very good on every hero, but I'm going to go into specifics, some of the top uh, picks uh, for scatter. Ninja is excellent with scatter because of his fast attack speed. He will scatter you to death. I have a scatter ninja. I love it. And uh, he's on my Lost Realm team. So don't sleep on ninja. If you can get a scatter ninja, use it. Succubus works very well with scatter. I have a 7 of 8 scatter succubus. It works very well with her proc. She's uh, damaging you uh, by max HP. She's also limiting your attack speed when she procs, and with each, each attack, she's going to be taking away all your energy. So it's a triple threat when you uh, have a scatter on your succubus. Trust me, she is excellent with that talent. Excellent. Scatter works very well with Druid. Of course, I recommend Berserk on Druid, but uh, absent of Berserk, you may want to consider a scattered Druid as your main Druid. Scatter is one of Motanica's best talents. He has a lot of good talents, but I recommend Scatter and either Crest or Main Talent for your Motanica. Motanica is probably the only hero in Castle Clash that can go one-on-one -on -one against that giant Motanica that's in HBMT and in some of those uh, de uh, those uh, dungeons. Uh, Motanica can take him out if he has Scatter. So I would very, 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 very strongly suggest putting your Scatter on your Motanica if you don't have another talent that you want to go with but it works very excellent with him remember he's the number one debuffer in the game he's taking away your attack your attack speed and your movement speed and the only thing that he's not doing when he procs is taking away your energy well you can solve that problem if you add scatter to his uh, talent and now he's taking away your energy your attack your attack speed and your movement speed virtually making you uh, helpless when you're going against the scatter Motanica. So Harpy Queen, her number one talent probably is scatter. Now Harpy Queen is just like Motanica. She's taking away your attack, your attack speed, and your movement speed every time she procs. The big difference with Harpy Queen is that she has auto proc and she has fast energy recovery. So she's procking every two seconds, every two sec, basically every other hit she's procking on you so if you combine that just like Motanica you combine the energy reduction with her also taking away your attack speed the attack speed uh, or the attack and the movement speed you have a total debuff going on with Harpy Queen she hits you takes away your energy then she hits you again takes away your attack attack speed movement speed and she hits you again takes away your energy so on and so forth you're left helpless and you're vulnerable, you're just going to get killed because you won't be able to proc. You won't be able to do anything because you're being scattered to death by Harpy Queen. Scatter on Harpy Queen is OP. Skull Knight is, will be excellent with Scatter because Scatter works on top of his proc. He's probably one of the only heroes where when he procs, you'll still be able to scatter. So because he has a very fast attack speed, he could scatter you to death. So those are my top picks, but there are other heroes, like I said earlier, that you can put Scatter on and they would still be OP. I mean, Scatter Arctica would be OP, Scatter Ghulam would be OP, Dread Drake. There are a lot of heroes on here. So if you have Scatter, especially if you have a hero born with Scatter, save it and, and skill it up because you're going to find use for it. All right, so that was my video on Scatter. That was episode four. And I have more episodes coming out. I'm going to be banging them out every week. One, one or two a week. Uh, depending on how busy I am. But I am going to do it until I cover every talent. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, 
you know if you want to see more you know like subscribe whatever and um, I appreciate that helps me out a little bit when you do that and also you know my crib this is my guild I'm gonna be advertising it we have openings we've been decimated by Guild Wars just like every other guild I mean I don't know what's up with Guild Wars but everybody their loyalty has shifted and instead of being them uh, being in the guild that they've been in from the start now they're all leaving so that they can get a hundred more fame you know what is that they can get a hundred and fifty more fame or something like that by joining some top guild but what's up I don't know I don't know I'm a very loyal person I'm never gonna leave my guild if you don't have a guild or you got kicked out of your guild because you know you missed a guild war because your kid was sick or something like that and they kick you out you know join my crib we're on Android server and I want to fill this up. I want to fill this guild all the way up to the top. Anyway, that's my little guild announcement. I'm going to do that almost every video. Take care, and I'll see you guys later on the next one. Peace.